Hello, welcome. In this short video, let us look at an example illustrating the evaluation of inverse set transform in the case of multiple order poles. That is, that is consider an example where we have x of z is equal to one by one plus z inverse, and then we have one minus z inverse whole square. So that means we have two poles at z equal to one. So in this case, how do we find the inverse that transform so let us look at that one so to make the rational polynomial as a function of positive powers of z we have x of z divided by z is equal to z square that is basically we are multiplying both the numerator and denominator with z cube so z square become, uh, is, uh, remains here and we have z here and in the denominator we have z plus 1 multiplied by z minus 1 whole square so that is the rational polynomial structure in positive powers of z. So the poles are a minus 1 and two poles at plus 1. So poles z is equal to minus 1 and then we have two poles that is z0 is at 1, z0 is at minus 1 and z1 and z2 are both at plus 1. So how do we so find the uh, inverse z transform? So for this one we use partial fractions that is xz uh, uh, x of z by z is equal to z square divided by z plus 1 into z minus 1 whole square and it is equal to a1 divided by z plus 1 plus a2 divided by z minus 1 plus a3 divided by z minus 1 whole square. So that is the partial fraction expansion of the x of z by z. Now we have to find a1, a2 and a3. So we are going to use method 2 for finding the coefficients that is a1 is given by z plus 1 multiplied by x of z by z that is z square divided by z plus 1 into z minus 1 whole square and evaluated at z is equal to minus 1. So this one becomes uh, z plus 1 and z plus 1 cancel each other. So z square means 1 and then z minus 1 means minus 1 minus 1 so minus 2 square that is 4. So a1 is 1 by 4. Now the value a3 will compute a2 later that is a3 is given by z minus 1 whole square multiplied by z square divided by z plus 1 into z minus 1 whole square and this value is evaluated z equal to 1 so this becomes 1 by 1 plus 1 that is 2 so a3 is 1 by 2 now finally a2 the, for finding a2 we have to use the following formula it is d by dz that is derivative of z minus 1 whole square into z square divided by z plus 1 multiplied by z minus 1 whole square and this one has to be evaluated evaluated at z equal to 1. So these two terms cancel each other and we are left with z square by z plus 1. So the derivative is z square into minus 1 by z plus 1 whole square and the second term is plus 2z divided by z plus 1. And the whole thing has to be evaluated at z equal to 1. So clearly it is equal to minus 1 by 1, uh, 1 plus 1, 2, 2 square 4 and then plus 2 into 1, 2 and 2 plus 1, sorry 1 plus 1 is 2. So 1 minus 1 by 4, that should be 3 by 4. That means a2 is 3 by 4. Therefore x of z by z is equal to, the first term is 1 by 4, so 1 by 4 divided by z plus 1 and then 3 by 4 divided by z, plus z minus 1 and finally 1 by 2 divided by z minus 1 whole square. So therefore x of now we have to come back to a rational polynomials in terms of negative powers of z. So x of z will be equal to uh, first term will be z uh, 1 by 4 into z by z plus 1. So it will become 1 by 4 into 1 by 1 plus z inverse that is the first term. Now the second term will be plus 3 by 4 into 1 by 1 minus z inverse and the last term is uh, slightly tricky so we have to be very careful 1 by 2 multiplied by uh, z by z minus 1 whole square so that means it can be rewritten as 1 by 2 and then z as it is and this 1 by 1, mi 1 by z minus 1 whole square can be rewritten as by taking a z square term common in the denominator we can write it as 1 by z square into 1 minus z inverse whole square. Now if you look at this one very carefully it can be rewritten as 1 by 2 minus z 
multiplied by the derivative of 1 by 1 minus z inverse that is derivative of 1 by 1 minus z inverse is minus 1 by z, mi z inverse whole square multiplied by minus 1 by z square into minus 1 so it will basically result into the, the same term so x of z is equal to 1 by 4 1 by 1 plus z inverse and then 3 by 4 1 by 1 minus z inverse and finally min plus 1 by 2 minus z derivative of 1 by 1 minus z inverse so now we can find the inverse z transform very uh, uh, as follows that is x of n is 1 by 4 and this one is basically uh, in the inverse transform that is inverse z transform of 1 by 1 plus z inverse is u of n so the inverse transform or inverse z transform of 1 by 1 plus z inverse is minus 1 power n u of n and for this one it is 3 by 4 into u of n that is 1 by 1 minus z inverse is inverse z transform is u of n and for this one we have to use the derivative property and we can write the inverse z transform as 1 by 2 multiplied by n into u of n so it is based on the derivative property of the z transform we can write this one so x of n is finally 1 by 4 minus 1 power n u of n plus 3 by 4 u of n plus n by 2 u of n so in this example we have looked at the inverse z transform for the multiple order poles case that is when x of z has a structure like 1 by 1 plus z inverse into 1 minus z inverse whole square that is there is a repetition of poles in the system function or the z transform then how do we find the inverse z transform so for that purpose first we have to write x of z by z as a rational polynomial with positive powers of z and then we find their poles and the uh, and then we have to apply partial fractions that is x of z by z is written as uh, a1 by z plus 1 plus a2 by z minus 1 plus a3 by z minus 1 whole square a1 is determined as uh, z plus 1 multiplied by x of z by z so which give finally gives us 1 by 4 and a3 is also found in a similar way by find multiplying z minus 1 whole square to x of z x of z by z to get 1 by 2 and a2 is determined by derivative uh, of this z minus 1 whole square multiplied by x of z by z and the value is again evaluated at z equal to 1 that is the pole value and so which uh, turns out to be 3 by 4 so finally x of z by z is 1 by 4 into 1 by uh, 1 plus z and then 3 by 4 into 1 by z minus 1 and then 1 by 2 into 1 by z minus 1 whole square uh, we write x of z back in the function of as a function of z inverse so we have 1 by 4 into 1 by 1 plus z inverse plus 3 by 4 into 1 by 1 minus z inverse plus and upon some upon some ma manipulation the third term will be 1 by 2 minus z derivative of 1 by 1 minus z inverse then by looking at the standard z transforms we can write x of n as 1 by 4 into minus 1 power n u of n for the first term 3 by 4 into u of n for the second term and 1 by 2 n u of n based on the derivative property for the third term so therefore x of n is finally uh, n by 2 plus 3 by 4 plus 1 by 4 into minus 1 power n u of n thanks for watching